That's the thing you never want to do with the race is jack stand. People have been killed, maimed by blown clutches, blown tracks. So as you can see, I had my helmet on. I had it securely fastened, uh, not pointing near anything other than that fence and nobody behind me. So it's this is a great day. We got a 75, 80 degree high high air density day. So this explains it perfectly. By the way, guys. I did three. Uh, I didn't show you the first one. The second or third pull when the pipe was a little hotter and if you noticed I had the brake on. You got to be careful you don't uh, warp the rotor. So I was given a, an actual load condition but under a shorter run than you'd make in the field to get an idea. So this sled with uh, adjustable weights we tuned it for max speed last year, which according to Polaris is 8,200 80, 80, to 8,250, which is correct on a good air day with a hot pipe. If you're a drag race guy, only going 500 feet, that is not the proper RPM. You're going to finish at probably 79, and in the warmer air, you'll be down another 100. Here's why, guys. This is a good air day. We're peaking at 82.50. Now it goes to 30 degrees out or 35. We don't have the horsepower. We're only going to peak at 8 maybe. So that's why if you're going to buy a clutch kit, you want to have one that's adjustable. And that's why. The best clutch kit guy, the best clutch guy in the world can set this sled up for let's go back to our zero degree day. We're going to add a little weight over stock, just a hair. We're going to have the optimum clutches. Now, when it comes to 25, 30 degrees and you're in softer snow, we're going to be loaded too heavy. That's why Skidoo has a patent on their clicker. Uh, Skidoo is the best clutch for a consumer because you can easily adjust it. So, I had a guy, a kid, drive me nuts, which was a good thing because every question he had was an intelligent question a week ago. I answered him every night for five or six days on clutching. So let me start it on basic clutching. You can thank Brian R. He's got an F7. Sharp kid. He even uh, knew enough to ask me about uh, the fuel, which we'll get into. So the first thing on your clutch is your primary spring. That it controls your engagement, which on a stock sled is fairly low for a reason. You don't burn the belt as much, it works better when you're in the woods. So the first thing you want to do, stick with your stock spring if you're unstudded, like I am. If you decide to stud your sled, you're going to have a little better bite. Get a spring comparable to your stock spring, 20 or 30 pounds heavier on the number one number. That will bring the engagement up 2 to 300, you won't have the bog. The second misconception and mistake is secondary springs. I've raced my 850 in a cross country. I love the way it is with the front clutch just a little heavier, so I'm at my max 8200 on a cold day. I like the back shift. I, like, I just like the way it works. If I was a big guy, let's say 300 pounds, or riding with a passenger all the time, and the sled was a little bit doggy on the back shift out of the corner, the only thing I would do different is I would put in a stiffer secondary spring. That's going to keep my helix from coming in quite as quick, give me a little bit more rev out of the corner. Speaking of these clutch kits where the guy has a stiff secondary spring, the only time you want a stiffer secondary spring is the scenario I just told you. When we set the NHRA record at 160.50, we had a XP 153 horse secondary spring with our 280 horse engine. The reason being a stiff secondary spring keeps your belt on the secondary. Takes horsepower as it comes off. So don't get caught up in that stiff spring stuff. The next thing, we'll go into adjustability. I can do the same thing if I go down to my Polaris dealer buy three sets of ramps. I've got a MIG welder so I'll go in the shop, I'll add a gram to one, I'll take a gram away from the other, i got three sets of ramps. What I'd much rather do, it's much easier, buy a Dalton or a Thundershift. There's a set screw, you can get different length set screws for different weights. So, on my cold day, 
I need the, I've got the horsepower, I need the clutch weight, I turn my set screw, set screw in closer to the tip, I get my RPMs back where they belong. On a warm day, I back it out. Only difference between the Dalton and the Thunder Shift, the Thunder Shift has a little more adjustability. You can add weight and the extra weight in the center. The Dalton, you basically do the same thing with three different length set screws. So guys, before you buy a clutch kit or before you do anything, you need adjustable primary weights and you'll probably be satisfied with that. Now, for you guys that want to go a little faster, stock clutching is very close for most of us on these machines. To go faster, usually what we do in a drag race situation, we take the stock helix, um, I'm not even sure on the number on this, but let's say it was, for instance, a 5240. What I would do is add one or two degrees on the first number. That's going to make the engine be loaded a little bit heavier coming out. It's going to help me with traction. And as long as I don't get it too steep, I'm not going to bog. I'm going to accelerate a little quicker as my pipe comes up to temperature. So I'm going to accelerate just a little better in this range. And providing I've got my primary right, um, I do a lot of snow dragging so I don't spin excessively. I'm going to be probably the same leaving, pull it up a little more, and then good on the end. The helix. Let me explain that a little better. You've got two numbers on your helix. Your first number is in the beginning of your shift ratio. That's the one I'm going to play with. There's no reason for me to play with the second number over the factory because I've already adjusted my RPMs with my primary weights. In the case of the Skidoo 850, where they were a little logy mid-range, we did add one degree to the last number on the helix to load the engine more, so we didn't have to load the primary as much. So now that you guys have basic knowledge of clutching, and you can clutch your sled, figure out what you need, or buy a clutch kit with the adjustable weights, the fine-tuning would be, let's say you're a cross-country racer, and on a smaller sled and you want to keep it on the pipe more, rather than going to that stiff secondary spring and losing horsepower, what I'm going to do is put a little more helix in, which might seem backwards, but that's going to allow me to lighten up my front clutch. Your front clutch reacts quicker than your secondary. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. Let's go over the basics one more time. Your RPM are dependent on the weather. Even though Polaris is 8200 to 8250, they're giving you a general range for normally when we ride. If it's 40 below up in Alaska, this thing is going to turn 8350 even with a heavier clutch because the engine dynamics are so much more efficient. Uh, asphalt racing when it gets to 4,000 feet are 9400 um, triple turns 9250 93 and the better air the rpms come back no matter and so we adjust the clutch accordingly so hopefully this helps let's go over it one one more time for you guys that watch the whole video so you don't have to start at the beginning again your primary spring the first number controls the engagement i forgot to mention the second number controls your rpms a bit because if you get a stiffer second number you're going to have our higher rpms I much rather tune with the adjustable weights than try and throw in a spring 20 pounds different because I can do it so quick with the adjustable weights. The ramps, uh, helix, your first number controls the first part of the shift, second number controls the mid to the top end. I didn't get into belts. Uh, belts would be a whole nother deal. Your stock belts are very good. If you switch to a different compound belt, let's say a harder belt, because the clutch is going to have, I don't want to say more trouble, but it's going to be tougher to grip, then you need to add weight. If you go to a softer belt, it's going to grip easier, and then you'll take away a little bit of weight to get your correct RPMs. So thanks, guys. If any questions, uh, message me on Facebook. Uh, message me on this video. Uh, be glad to answer them. Thanks.